Welcome to UEA's Data Points, a new series where we explore the foundations, practice, and impact of data science. I'm your host, Monica Manny. In this four-part series, we will explore topics ranging from open research commons to the role of body image in hiring, and from sports medicine to the Kiche Mayan book of creation. Perhaps most importantly, we explore ideas for training and empowering the next generation of data scientists. But before we get into all that, we should probably answer the question, what is data science? Kind of weird that you'd have a school of data science for something that doesn't have a definition. That was Raf Alvarado. Hi, my name is Raf Alvarado. I'm an associate professor in the School of Data Science, and I am the director of the Residential Master's Degree Program. And Raf has developed the 4 plus 1 model to define the field of data science. Yeah, so the purpose is, uh, in a very general way, it's basically to scratch an itch and actually come up with a definition. And it's also kind of annoying when people say, oh, it's just a buzzword, which is, I think, very annoying. It's actually, I mean, to some degree, it is a buzzword, but my, I'm an anthropologist. And when people say things with sincerity, and even if they're not actually academically correct, they usually have a good reason for it. And so, I, you know, I tend to take uh, uh, something like that seriously and say, well, what is behind this? Why are people using this term? It can't just be a buzzword because if it's simply an empty term, it would probably dissipate very quickly. It wouldn't have the legs that it has. And it certainly wouldn't have the money following it the way that it does now. So it was really kind of a good faith effort to flesh out and provide a definition uh, to sort of put an end to some of this uh, dismissal of the field. The 4 plus 1 model is based on four areas of data science surrounding the central component of practice. The development of this model began with the examination of the data pipeline. So the data science pipeline is an idea that you'll find in the literature. And probably the most famous one is Chris Wiggins' definition. Uh, I believe he calls it the OSEMI pipeline. That's an acronym for the different phases of data science. Um, and he makes a strong case that you know data science is essentially expertise in this pipeline. And it consists of these different phases. So I think the O stands for obtain, and then S is scrub, and there's explore, model, and then interpret. Uh, and so that's what the pipeline is. And you'll see this definition in different places, and you'll see lots of variations, but pretty much they stick to the, the same sort of logic. And so that became the basis for the model. It's like, okay, let's take this, um, this pipeline and let's deconstruct it and see what, what's common to it. And it turns out there's some, uh, I, I feel like you can break it down into four different, different areas that, that emerge from that. From here, Raf began to deconstruct the pipeline and extrapolate the foundational components of data science. It's this model that serves as a structure of this series. The 4 plus 1 model is, uh, it's important to understand that it is an analytical tool. And so what I did was I took this uh, sort of composite view of what data science is and realized that the pipeline that was being described is really more of an arc. In other words, if you look at what the, uh, the, the point where data comes in to the system and compare that to where data comes out of the system, they're not on opposite sides of anything. They're actually in the same place, which is the world, right? So data comes from some place in the world, some domain of of, of research like physics or something or finance, and then whatever is uh, analyzed in that pipeline and put back goes back into that same world and has an influence on it. So you can think of it as like a, 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 an arc where data moves into the system and then comes back out. If you look at it as an arc, you can actually see that there are uh, parts of, the, of that pipeline that fold back on itself that are similar to each other, but kind of look different if you don't think of it this way. And so as a result of this, of this analysis, I ended up d- discovering that there were four major areas that you could sort of deconstruct from the pipeline. And the reason we say plus one is because all those parts are just abstractions. They have to be integrated, and they're always related to each other in any kind of application of data science. So that's an outline and history of the 4 plus 1 model. But it's important to understand the four different areas and how they contribute to the practice of data science. So let's start with the first area, value. By value, I mean, why are you acquiring data in the first place? Right. What's the business proposition? What's the scientific motivation? Uh, what is it in the world that you're interested in studying or affecting uh, that you're acquiring data for and doing analysis for? So we call that the area of value because that's where the, uh, the purpose of working with data comes from. And also it's where data has an influence on the world where it can either do good or harm. 
And so that's where ethics comes in, right? After value, we have the area of design. And the area of design is this area of translating data as it is uh, coming from the world in such a way that the machine can understand it. A lot of what we do in data science is translating between human ways of representing things and machine ways of representing things, and then taking it from the sort of the machine way of representing things back into the world to the human way. So that's what we call design. Next, the third area, systems. And then the uh, systems part is kind of self-evident as about technology. And finally, the area people commonly associate with data science analytics. That's where statistics is. That's where computer science is. When you think of computer science as a branch of discrete mathematics, that's where simulations are. That's where um, uh, systems engineering is in the sense of uh, operations research and things like that. And that's the whole analytical part. So that's the four areas of the four plus one model. But this still leaves the plus one, which sits right in the middle of it all. Practice. None of these things live uh, function autonomously. There's no such thing as a, as a data modeling process that's done independently of, 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 of value, let's say, because that's where bias can be introduced. And, it's, and obviously, you, when you're designing a, a data model to support some research, you're looking forward to how you're going to model this data uh, analytically and what you're going to do with it. Uh, so there's always, this, every uh, area of the model is always connected to every other area. Uh, in practice. So that's why we think of having a plus one, which is the area of practice where all these things are integrated. But the key there is uh, what, what's introduced in practice that's not part of the four plus one is connecting the four areas to the world of, of, of other other domains. So we're talking about when you start applying the model to medicine or to finance or to education or to politics or to whatever, those uh, that connection to those other areas is what sort of drives the integration of those of the four areas into into a, a practical reality, and so that's what we think of when we when we think of the plus one part of the model. So the four plus one model is how we answer the question, "What is data science?" And with the shared definition, we can begin our exploration of the real world application of data science. Each episode through this first series of UVA's Data Points will focus on a particular area of the four plus one model examining how it works in practice and how it connects to the real world around us. We'll be starting in the value space for episode one, featuring an interview between Brian Wright, a faculty member and the director of undergraduate programs at the UVA School of Data Science, and Kathy O'Neill, data scientist and a New York Times bestselling author. To stay up to date with current episodes, click subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about UVA School of Data Science, visit us at datascience.virginia.edu. And if you have a data science topic you'd like us to explore, email us at uvadatapoints at virginia.edu. We'll see you next time.